time, time, and time once again. What's up, 23% Nation? This is your man, Coach D. Today, I'm back with Herb of the Day, the one and only time. So you may be complaining that you don't have enough time. You may be asking, what time is it? Or once again, you may say, well, Coach D, I don't have time to listen to a video about time. <laughs> well, guys, whatever the case may be, please listen and watch on. Why? Because we're about to dive just a little deeper into the wonderful world of time. All right, 23% Nation, here we go. First up, a little bit of background info. So a lot of you are asking, what in the world is time? That's right, guys, and you pronounce it just like it's spelled T-I-M-E. Thyme, also known as thymus vulgaris, is an herb that belongs to the mint family. It is a relative of oregano. That's right. By the way, if you are interested in learning more about oregano, another herb, then please listen to my video entitled Herb of the Day Oregano. That's right. Now, for those of us who are interested in seeing what time looks like, well, guys, just take a look at the picture. Beautiful, lovely, amazing. So there we have it, guys. A little bit of background information about the one and only time. Now, here's another great question. A lot of people want to know, Coach D, is time a vegetable? Well, guys, let's find out. It's considered an herb rather than a vegetable since herbs are something that mostly flavor food and supply nutrients too. Vegetables are plants that can be eaten as a main ingredient. In other words, herbs tend to be consumed in smaller quantities than vegetables. Wow, how nice. So there we have it guys. We now know the difference between an herb and a vegetable. Just to reiterate the point, remember, Herbs are primarily used to flavor foods, so naturally you're only going to use them in very small quantities. Vegetables, on the other hand, can be the main ingredient. So vegetables you're going to eat in bigger, larger quantities. And that's basically the primary difference. So there we have it, a little more background information about the difference between an herb and a vegetable. Okay, now it's time to dive into a few fun facts. Thyme isn't just one of the most popular culinary herbs today. It also has a long history of use as a medicinal healer and protector. That's right, guys. So that's another very important thing about herbs. They not only flavor foods, but they also have medicinal properties. For example, back in the Roman era, it was consumed to prevent and treat poisoning. That's right. Take a look at the picture. We have ancient physicians working on Roman soldiers, giving them time. That's right. So there we have it. A few fun facts about the one and only time. More fun facts. In the days before refrigeration and food safety laws, including time and recipes, gave you at least some protection against spoiled meat and foodborne illness. Nice. And prior to modern antibiotics, coming on the scene, thyme oil was used to medicate bandages. That's right, guys. So for those of us who are totally unaware of thyme, yes, it can be used in its herbal form, but as we can clearly see, it can also be used in its oil form. That's right. Why? It, it's used to medicate bandages. So there we have it. More fun facts about the one and only time. More fun facts. Whether you realize it or not, you've likely used this herb medicinally before since time all time's most active ingredient is found in Listerine mouthwash and Vicks vapor rub due to its antibacterial and antifungal properties. Interesting. So for those of us who are always using Listerine mouthwash, for those of us who are always using Vapor Rub, 
Well, guess what, guys? You <laughs> unknowingly are using time. That's right. Now, for all of my chemistry heads that are out there, you want to know and see what the chemical structure of time all looks like? Well, there you have it, right? Lots of methyl groups, one hydroxyl group, and one benzene ring. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. A little more information, or shall I say fun facts, about the one and only time. All right, more fun facts. What is the meaning of the name time? So guys, let's find out. The name has origins in Middle English and Old French. Who knew? It originated from the Latin and Greek words timon and thuin which mean to burn and sacrifice. Wow, who knew that? Now, just to help you out a little bit with where this word comes from, I did a little bit of research and check it out, right? So as you can see, guys, the name time not only has Greek ancestry, but it also contains French and Middle English ancestry as well. So in other words, it's an old word. How about that? <laughs> so there we have it, guys. More fun facts about the one and only time. All right, more fun facts. Back in ancient times, it was associated with courage, bravery, and strength. Roman soldiers exchanged sprigs of the herb as a sign of respect. Both Greeks and Romans burned bundles of time to purify their homes and temples. They also commonly use it medicinally in their bath water. Wow, how interesting is that? So, ladies and gentlemen, the next time you see anybody burning anything herb-related, please don't fret, don't worry, and definitely don't fear. It's nothing negative. As a matter of fact, it's only positive. So, in other words, rejoice whenever you see anybody burning anything that resembles an herb. More fun facts. In the European Middle Ages, the herb was nestled under pillows to encourage restful sleep. How nice. It also, it was also placed on coffins during funerals because it was believed that this would assure passage into the next life. Wow, how spiritual is that? So, ladies and gentlemen, the next time you are invited to a funeral, well, take some time with you and put it on the casket. Why not? <laughs> okay. So there we have it, guys. A few fun facts about the one and only time. All right. More fun facts. Long ago, the Egyptians even cleverly used time for embalming. Wow. It made a perfect embalming agent since it's high Time all content kills off bacteria and fungus. So even the ancient Egyptians knew how important it was to use time. So guys, 23% nation, if they can use it, we most certainly can use it as well. More fun facts. Another common question is this. How can you eat time? Wow, here we go. This herb is readily available both fresh and dried year round. When consumed fresh, thyme herbs will be more flavorful. However, this may also be less convenient and will not last as long. If you purchase it fresh, it can last one to two weeks in the refrigerator. Dry thyme should be stored in a cool, dark place and ideally used within six months. The dry version can be substituted for the fresh kind in most recipes. One teaspoon, and I repeat, one teaspoon of dried leaves is equivalent to one tablespoon of chopped thyme leaves. Please, make sure you make a special note of that. One teaspoon of dried leaves is equal to one tablespoon of fresh leaves. For medicinal purposes, it can also be purchased in the form of thyme tea, tinctures, powder supplements, or thyme oil. So there we have it, guys. There are lots of different ways that we can experience thyme. <laughs> so there we have it. More fun facts about the one and only thyme. All right. Now it's time for the not-so-fun facts. Oh, no. Coach D, here we go. 
Time is considered safe when consumed in normal food amounts. When taking in larger quantities for medicinal purposes, it's possibly safe for short durations of time. However, it can possibly cause digestive issues when taken in large amounts. So, ladies and gentlemen, in other words, don't get carried away using the time. <laughs> All right? Use it in small amounts. Remember, it's an herb. So naturally, you only need a very small amount, whether you're using it for medicinal purposes and or to flavor your foods. Always remember, small, small quantities. More not-so-fun facts. For pregnant women, okay, ladies, let's talk. For pregnant or nursing women, it's best to consume this herb in normal food amounts, not medicinal quantities. It's not a common food allergen, but if you're allergic to oregano, then you might also be allergic to thyme. So, ladies, know your food intolerances, know your food allergies, especially when you're pregnant, right? Because ultimately, we want to keep the little ones safe and healthy. So, there we have it, guys. More not-so-fun facts about the one and only time. All right, more not-so-fun facts. Ladies, listen up. For women who have hormone-sensitive conditions like breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, uterine fibroids, or endometriosis, it might act like estrogen in the body. Avoid it if you have any condition that might be made worse by exposure to estrogen. That's right, ladies. So please, 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 if you have any of these hormone-sensitive conditions, such as cancer or fibroids or endometriosis, then you may want to consult with your physician to find out if you should either continue consuming it, reduce your exposure, or eliminate it all together. So there we have it, guys. More not-so-fun facts about the one and only time. Okay, more not-so-fun facts. Guys, listen, I'm tired of being Mr. Doom and Gloom, but I gotta let you know, right? So here we go. When used in large amounts, this herb <laughs> might possibly slow blood clotting. That's right. So be especially careful if you have any clotting disorders and or are currently taking blood thinners. For the same reason, it's best not to take it two weeks before surgery. So ladies and gentlemen, listen up. If you have a blood clotting disorder, if you are on blood thinners, or if you are getting ready for surgery, even minor surgery, please talk to the doctor. Let them know that you are using time and get their opinion as to what they suggest. Should you continue its normal use? Should you reduce it or completely eliminate it? Right? So there we have it. More not so fun facts about the one and only time. Okay, it's now time to dive into the 520 rule. Ladies and gentlemen, the 520 rule is all about food labels. Basically, it helps us to read and understand them. Ultimately, it's a guide. It's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient. Now, specifically when we talk about the 520 rule, we're talking about percent daily value, abbreviated percent DV. Now, to dive into percent daily value just a little bit, let's take a look at our sample food label. Now, as you can see, it is divided into three main parts, purple, yellow, and blue. So at this time, let's go part, part by part by part. First up is the purple portion, which highlights percent daily value. Now, as you can see, percent DV is represented as a percentage. So think of it as a scale, 0% being the low end, 100% being the high end. Now let's take a look at the yellow portion, which basically highlights a few nutrients which unfortunately have the ability to promote sickness, illness, and disease within the body temple. So say hello to saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium. 
That's why it says limit these nutrients. So the next time you eat or drink something, you probably want to make sure that the percent DV for these nutrients are as close to 0% as possible. Moving forward, let's talk about the blue nutrients, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. Here's the good news. These nutrients do just the opposite of the yellow nutrients. Rather than promote sickness, illness, and disease, they promote health. They promote wellness within the body temple. That's why it says get enough of these nutrients. So the next time you eat or drink something, make sure that the percent DVs for those nutrients are as close to 100% as possible. Sometimes the 520 rule can be simplified and generalized. That being said, 5% or less is low versus 20% or more is high. Now for me, that's way too general. I prefer specifics. So if a food or beverage item offers 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if a food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV of any nutrient, then that food or beverage item is a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if a food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now that we've discussed the 520 rule, I believe it's safe for us to now talk about the nutrition facts. So for today's lecture, we're going to simply say that a single serving of thyme is one tablespoon of fresh thyme leaves. That's right, guys, one tablespoon of fresh thyme. So here's what we're going to get. Three calories, that's it one gram of carbohydrates and look at this less than one gram of protein fiber and fat now i i do understand that that may be small it may be minuscule but think about it this way at least you're getting some protein at least you're getting some fiber right and as we all know i call fiber nature's plumber why because it keeps your tubes clean right your arteries, free of plaque and cholesterol. Your large intestine, free of toxins and waste. How great is that? Now, when it comes to the vitamin and mineral content, well, it's small, but it's still there. Let's be grateful for what the plant can offer, not for what it doesn't offer. So, vitamin C, 6% DV, not a good source. Vitamin A, 3% DV, not a good source. Iron, 3% DV, not a good source. Manganese, 3% DV, not a good source. Now I understand that you may be saying, well, Coach D, it's not a good source of any of those vitamins or minerals. And yes, you're right. However, if you want more, eat more. That's it, plain and simple. So there we have it, guys. More nutrition facts from the one and only time. Okay, now that we've covered the nutrition facts, let's now dive into the health benefits. But before we do, I very quickly want to talk with you about the principle of cause and effect, which basically states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason. That being said, I want to let you know that if today you have some type of disease, well, chances are you cause it. Versus if you're very healthy, well, believe it or not, you probably caused that too. So that being said, I want to now apply this principle to the health benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what we have to understand. The health benefit ultimately is the effect. What creates these effects? What causes them? Well, plants, in this case, time contains phytonutrients or some people may choose to use the word medicine. That's right. So whenever we put time in our bodies, this is what's gonna happen. Benefit number one, helps fight sore throats. Now, what's the cause? 
What's the phytonutrient? What's the medicine you may ask? Well, say hello to Carvacrol. That's right, guys. Carvacrol. Health benefit number two may help lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Perfect. What's the phytonutrient? Say hello to Time All. All right. Benefit number three can help prevent food poisoning. What's the cause? Well, say hello to Time All once again. Benefit number four may boost your mood. It'll make you feel better, right? What's the cause? Say hello to Carver Crawl once again. Benefit number five supports the immune system and may help fight cancer. Amazing, right? What's the call? The the cause? Well, it's Carver Crawl once again. Number six naturally protects against bronchitis. That's right. So, what's the cause? Well flavonoids okay in particular apigenin naringenin luteolin and thymonin benefit number seven protects oral and dental health that's right so what's the cause what's the phytonutrient what's the medicine well say hello to time all once again so there we have it guys seven amazing health benefits from the one and only time all right now let's talk about food okay i'm hungry <laughs> now guys we're gonna go to our website for everything vegan right so say hello to forksoverknives.com by the way there is a movie entitled forks over knives which i highly recommend you watch now as usual did a little bit of research right went to the website typed in time and look at what i found two amazing plant-based time recipes that i want to share with you right now so the first one is entitled white bean hummus with fresh thyme and basil. Take a look at the picture. Looks delish. Yes. Recipe number two, white Irish bean and cabbage stew. Take a look at that picture. If your mouth isn't watering, I don't know what's going on. Now, if you're like me, of course you're interested in making and tasting these dishes. So guess what? Coach D is going to hook it up. All you have to do is click on the description box. Why? Because I'm providing you with a direct link to both recipes to ForksOverKnives.com. So when you get there, here's what you're going to find. A lot of great information. You're going to find an ingredient list. You're going to find pictures, maybe a video. And guess what? Cooking instructions, right? So guys, do me a favor. Do yourselves a favor. Click on the link. Make the dish taste a dish come back to the video and share your thoughts so there we have it not one but two amazingly delicious thyme plant-based recipes from forksoverknives.com all right 23 percent nation i hear you a lot of you say with well, coach d thanks for the fun facts the nutrition facts and the not so fun facts but what i really want to know is when should i eat more time right I mean, after all, we all can use more time, right? <laughs> well, guys, the perfect answer to this question is Nature Day. Now, a lot of people may say, well, Coach D, what in the world is Nature Day, right? Well, guys, Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, I get it. You know nothing of the challenge. You've been living under a rock. You've been... In lockdown, you've been in quarantine. I understand it. So allow me. The 23% challenge is a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships. Oh, and it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, there are two things that you need to understand about the challenge. Number one, it's monthly, meaning every month, meaning January through December. It's also only seven days. That's right. But it's the first seven days of every single month, the first through the seventh. Now, being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every month. So whether it's May 1st, March 1st, or even December 1st, it's always Nature Day. 23% Nation. A lot of you now want to know all right, Coach D, so now that you've exposed me to Nature Day, really, what is it all about? I want to know. 
Guys, Nature Day is all about eating more plants and drinking more water. That's really it. Now, for some people, this can be very, very easy. For others, it can be very, very difficult, right? So allow me to address those who think it's difficult first. Guys, baby steps. So here's what you can try. Try eating only plants and drinking only water before 12 p.m. That way, after 12 p.m., you can eat and drink whatever you want. If before 12 p.m. doesn't work for you, then take the other 12 hours. How about after 12 p.m.? That way, you can eat and drink whatever you want before 12 p.m., right? <laughs> okay? Now, for those of us who think it's easy, right? Well, guys, let's talk about it. I invite you to become a 3% vegan. Now, that's any person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plants and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Next up is a 10% vegan, right? That's any person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Next is a 17% vegan. That's any person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only five days out of an entire month. And lastly is the ultimate 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be. So, a lot of you may say, well, Coach D, what do you eat during the 23% challenge, right? Well, guys, I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods, which happen to be fruits, vegetables, herbs and spices, legumes, meaning beans and peas, whole grains, and let's not forget about nuts and seeds. And of course, I only drink water. So there you have it, guys. We now know exactly what Nature Day is all about. All right, 23% Nation, I know some of you are still a little puzzled, right? And you probably are now asking, well, Coach D, I get it, right? Nature Day is all about eating more plants, right? But should I do it? I mean, what type of person needs nature day right well guys let's let's discuss it so maybe just maybe you're dealing with some type of physical issue maybe just maybe you're dealing with some type of mental issue maybe just maybe you want to change your appearance or maybe just maybe you're sick and tired of the standard american diet and you want to transition to a more whole food plant-based eating style right well, guys, Nature Day is for you. Now, let's be just a little more specific. Maybe you're dealing with the big four, such as heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes, right? Maybe you're dealing with skin issues, such as eczema, psoriasis, pimples, whiteheads, and black heads. Maybe you're dealing with digestive issues, such as leaky gut syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, diarrhea, right? Or maybe you're dealing with mental issues, such as depression, maybe you're bipolar, maybe you're mad all the time, maybe you're sad all the time, right? And so now you are sick of the doctor's visits, you're sick of the prescription medications, you're tired of all the procedures and the surgeries, I understand. And so now you're looking for a natural, holistic approach to your healing. Well, guys, it's easy, eat more plants. Maybe you're the type of person who wants to lose an inch from your hip or your thighs or from your waist, right? Maybe you're the type of person who wants to build some lean, mean muscle tissue. Well, guys, try our vegan lean and vegan bulk programs. Or maybe, like I said earlier, you're looking to transition from the standard American diet to a more whole food plant-based diet. Why? Because you heard it was good for the environment, right? So eat more plants. So now, guys, we now know exactly who Nature Day is for. All right, all right, all right. It's time for Coach D's tips. Now, the reason why I'm giving you help, I'm offering you advice, is because I want your Nature Day to be successful. So here are five tips to help make your Nature Day successful. Number one, go to the local grocery store. Now, when you get there, you're going to go to one of three places or maybe two or maybe even all three. Number one is the produce section. Number two is the freezer aisle. Number three is the canned good aisle. 
a lot of people may ask, well, Coach D, which is best, fresh, frozen, or canned? Well, guys, if I got to be honest, I'll give it to you this way. Number one is fresh. Number two is frozen. Actually, it's a very close second. And number three, dead last, is canned. Now, the reason why I put canned foods dead last is because of this one reason. Whenever you put any food inside of a can, okay, that food has to undergo a lot of different processes, okay? And so what happens is a lot of toxins are added, a lot of nutrients are either deactivated or they're destroyed. So at the end of the day, you may end up consuming more toxins than you do nutrients. Yeah, okay? Tip number two, go to the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So once you're done with the canned good owl, the freezer owl, and the produce section, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now this is where you're gonna see very large glass counters. You're gonna see food underneath the counter, right? Or through the counter, and it'll be sold by weight. And you'll probably see an attendant waiting to serve you. Well, walk over there, say hello, <laughs> and ask them if they offer any plant-based options or vegan options. Providing they say yes, and you don't know how it tastes, don't worry, don't fret, don't fear. Ask for a sample. It's free. Now, if you like it, I suggest half a pound or maybe even a whole pound. If, let's say, you're having a dinner party or maybe you're having people over for the game, then two pounds, three pounds, four pounds, why not five pounds? Tip number three, go visit your local farmer's market. That's right. Now, I highly recommend a farmer's market for those of us who love organic this and organic that, non-GMO this and non-GMO that. The really great thing about farmer's markets is that they only cater to the organic plant food market. That's right. So if you love organic plant foods, then the farmer's market is definitely the place to be. Another good thing about farmer's markets is that it's possible that the prices of the produce may be cheaper than at your local grocery store. Why? Because it's coming from local farmers. That's right. So they're now able to pass that savings on to you. Tip number four. It's time for us to go visit a vegan restaurant. Now, vegan restaurants are amazing. Why? Because they hire vegan chefs. Now, here are two things that you need to know about vegan chefs. Number one, they know how to cook plant food so that they retain the majority of their nutrients. And number two, they know which plant foods to combine to yield the most nutritious, delicious dishes. So there you have it. Please visit a vegan restaurant near you, ASAP. And tip number five is to go out and get a subscription to a vegan meal prep company. Guys, I understand that a lot of you complain that you don't know how to cook plant foods or maybe you just don't have time to cook plant foods, right? So let someone else do the cooking for you. Here's how it works. Give them a call, right? They make the food, they deliver the food, you eat the food. It's just that simple. So there we have it. Five amazing tips to help make your nature day successful. All right, it's time for our question of the day coming from yours truly and the rest of the 23% Nation. We want to know, is thyme an herb or a vegetable? Now, I believe I covered this information earlier in the lecture. So, write your answer in the comment box below. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well, think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please subscribe, share, comment, and like the video, especially if you love time, right? And don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out. Always remember to take care. God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.